Rahu is your subtle desire. I met an old friend. He is a meditative man. But he also has a strong desire to become the owner of a BMW car. He has been a successful businessman but always hesitated to buy a BMW, a very expensive car. Now he has become old but the desire still remains. And because he is a meditative man, he said to me, Aditya, I am buying a BMW because I don't want to take another birth just because this one intense desire was left unfulfilled. He bought a BMW car and then after one year he sold it. The wish was fulfilled. He was no more held back. He experienced freedom. He was a happy man. He had no regrets of selling the BMW because he just wanted to get rid of his desire. And now that it was fulfilled, now that he had realized its futility, he was able to let go of his desire. You will be able to give up on a desire only when you realize its futility. You see, this is a very deep subject and my answer is not for shallow listeners. They will only condemn me, ridicule me, offend me. That is all they can do. That is all they have been doing. To them, condemning, ridiculing, offending others is what gives them joy, makes them feel good. And to me, sharing the truth gives me joy. Both are desires. The intentions differ. While they like to hurt me, harm me, I like to heal, love and rejoice in sharing with all of you. Because I am perfectly aware that though certain men and women may condemn me, there are over thousands of followers out there who may read, who may listen to this answer someday, sometime, someplace. So you see, what you like is what you have within. You will appreciate only that which you yourself value within. The seed of goodness is found in the soil of appreciation. And your desire is directly linked to your liking. If you like to hurt others, the quality of your desires is degrading. And a degraded desire only leads to a degraded life. See how it all comes to desire. People ask, what is the purpose of my life? There was a man. And he was such a simple man. Wherever he would go, he would simply love to help. Help, a beautiful word, a miraculous word. The desire to help is the greatest desire of all. Desires remain, but it is your consciousness that helps you to decide which desire is good for your growth and which one is harmful. The desire to kill someone, the desire to hurt someone, the desire to cleverly cast a black magic spell on someone is a direct path to hell. You will be surprised. In the morning, people go to temples and on the same night, the same people commit unbelievable, terrible acts of sin. This is the reality of this human world. Don't go by the face. Don't go by the words. Don't go by the appearances. Just observe. Observe closely and you will find what is what. An ignorant man goes on hurting others. That is what makes him happy, makes him feel good. A conscious man goes on helping others. That is what brings bliss to his heart, to his soul. Understand the difference, sever the difference. Our prime purpose in this life is to help others. And if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. The subject of desires is very deep. The subject of Rahu is also very deep. They both complement each other because desire is Rahu. You have come to this human world because a desire was born within your being. Adam and Eve and the apple. The Bible mentions that Adam could not resist his desire to eat the apple. And that was the beginning of the human story. 
It is this desire that became the starting point of the human world in which you, I, we all are caught. The desires are like a serpent that engulfs us, blocks our consciousness and thereby brings many miseries to our life. Certain men seems to be more interested in pointing out what the scriptures the bible says they seem to more interested in correcting me by saying that you should say only that what the bible story says and this is the problem the problem is of the mind a story can have many dimensions and if the dimension that i am sharing is only adding more value helping you more motivating you more than what is the problem but certain human beings are simply so shallow that like parrots they would go on repeating the stories of the bible the bhagavad gita without realizing the many dimensions and the much depth that these beautiful stories incidents bring to our life such men will spend their whole life in correcting others but will miss to correct themselves and when a time comes when such people ask why life is so miserable much has to be cut much has to be dropped only the very essential has to be saved the non essential has to be completely destroyed understand desires are born based on your level of consciousness the level of consciousness you choose to tune into each moment of each day will determine the quality of your experience of the world a conscious man a man of awareness will always have a certain quality of desires and this quality is reflected through the zodiac sign now let us see the qualities of signs in a broader perspective Earth signs desires are more physical by nature. Water signs desires are more emotional by nature. Air signs desires are more intellectual by nature. Rahu represents intellectualism and there is a reason for this, a very beautiful reason and the reason is your mind. The mind is intellectual, the heart is intelligent. the mind loves to debate that feeds its ego the more the debate the more the intellectualism the more the mind is happy the north node or rahu is of the mind when your birth chart is inclined towards the north node you find intellectualism very interesting when your birth chart is inclined towards the south node that is ketu you find intellectualism a pain in the neck the greatest pain is to come across an intellectual man he goes on and on and on and he has all the knowledge of the world except the knowledge of the self whole life he spends in focusing on the outward the inward direction is always ignored and that is how such a man such a woman struggles to find lasting happiness because as bhagwan sri raman maharshi says it is not wrong to seek happiness what is wrong is to seek it on the outside when it is inside but an intellectual man cannot understand this a rahuish man cannot realize this the mind is not your intelligence the mind can be intellectual which is a very poor substitute for intelligence intellectuality is mechanical it is born out of the mind and the mind is mechanical the moment innocence disappears the soul of intelligence is gone it is a corpse it is better to call it simply intellect it can make you great intellectual but it will not transform your life and it will not make you open to the mysteries of existence exalted ketu is better than exalted rahu and that is purely my own personal statement very few could truly relate to it only those who follow their heart can understand my statement rahu is the head 
and the head cannot go beyond a certain limit it can calculate but it cannot go beyond the calculations the heart can go it is only the heart that can go beyond the calculations and that is why certain deeper aspects of this human life can be understood by the heart and not the head or the mind let me put it in this way exalted ketu will help you to kill desires while exalted rahu will make you more desirous when there are more desires there is more will power to run to chase to achieve and that is why an exalted rahu brings material success but not necessarily happiness bliss and peace to the soul exalted ketu is the exact opposite it reminds me of the famous verse of jesus jesus says a man who tries to save much will only lose and a man who is willing to lose will only save that's ketu that's how the nature of ketu is exalted ketu brings a certain wisdom to the native he is willing to sacrifice he is willing to let go he is least interested in taking any revenge he simply leaves the matter in the hands of god he has totally surrendered to the will of god only a ketuish man or woman can truly relate and follow me rahu exhales in airy signs because it is a perfect setup for rahu and airy signs are intellectual by nature rahu is also intellectual by nature they both belong to the head these airy signs provide all the source for rahu to empower its intellectualism so basically you see many scientists pandits scholars having rahu in the airy signs and in contrast many great yogis saints beautiful souls meditative souls have an exalted ketu in watery signs ketu is home in scorpio ketu is emotionally detached meditative in cancer and ketu is exalted in pisces the 12th sign the sign of liberation the sign of moksha the sign that is close to my heart if you ask me then in reality i don't see anything special happening from an exalted rahu yes you may earn a few million dollars a few luxury cars a few prestigious awards a few instances of fame but that is all fame is foolish it is pointless meaningless even if the whole world knows you how does it make you richer how does it make your life more blissful how does it help you to be more understanding to be more aware to be more alert to be more alive a few people may salute you may say nice things about you which in turn goes on feeding your ego and then the same ego becomes much larger than life and then eventually you become a slave of your ego and this inflated ego finally goes on killing you every day so much so that from inside you become a broken man the lights are on the cameras are on life is on and yet you feel at loss this is what an exalted rahu does on one hand you get the key to fame and wealth and on the other hand you get a good beating on the matters of love peace bliss and family life moreover an exalted rahu simply makes your life a good looking plastic rose everything is there everything looks perfect just the essence of life is lost the fragrance doesn't exist so to me the exaltation of rahu is as good as the end of blissful life but still since the reality of this human world is that majority of people are behind material pleasures more sex more money more power 
and so in this context rahu gains importance of being exalted else to a yogi to a meditative man or a meditative woman exalted rahu means a great hurdle to spiritual growth exalted rahu means your desires are at the peak and the greater the desires the greater are the miseries of life think before you desire a thing there is every possibility that it will be fulfilled and then you will suffer so airy signs intellectuality rahu may bring on some good money some good luxuries and some good fame but in the end in your bedroom when you are alone you are not bubbling with joy but weeping in utter unhappiness misery and pain millions and millions of men or women who were madly desirous of love of that one partner later regret why the man you loved so much when that same man becomes your husband you are on cloud 9 and then a time comes when the same husband becomes the greatest enemy of your happiness your peace your bliss you see that is why the master says that there is every possibility that your desire will be fulfilled and then you will suffer so desire is desire good or bad some day all desires have to be dropped only then true happiness can flow within you only then there is every possibility to experience god somebody asked but how to overcome desires that's a good question and the answer is found in neem karoli baba's insightful quote the baba to whom a young man had come to meet all the way from the us and his name was steve jobs the founder of apple and baba answers this question of how to overcome desires in the most beautiful way baba says if you want to see god kill desires desires are in the mind when you have a desire for something don't act on it and it will go away if you desire to drink this cup of tea don't and the desire for it will go away rahu casts ignorance this ignorance leads to many desires many times when you are in the tight clutches of your mind many desires many temptations come to your mind sometimes you feel you should eat this or eat that sometimes you feel you should have some sex sometimes you feel you should go to the some place sometimes you feel you should speak up no matter what the other person may feel or get hurt so you see every minute there is a great flow of desires flowing through your mind temptations desires they all come to your mind do not fear do not try to control them instead overcome them by raising the level of your consciousness desire has not to be destroyed it has to be purified desire has not to be dropped it has to be transformed your very being is desire to be against it is to be against yourself and to be against all that's why i mentioned in the very beginning that desires remain rahu remains but human beings are the only living beings who are blessed with the will power with the consciousness to raise the quality of desires the greater the purity of the mind the greater is the quality of desires but you do the exact opposite instead of first purifying the mind you directly repress the mind the desires and this is dangerous it is like sitting on a time bomb just a little moment and the bomb of desires blasts giving birth to many scandals miseries and so on don't stop eating non-veg just because somebody is telling you don't stop having a good marital sexual life just because somebody is telling you let life flow in its normal course through this flow if you understand the futility of eating non-veg food 
if you understand and realize the futility of getting too much into sex only then will you truly rise above the desires only then will you be able to purify the mind take the decisions of your life through your own experiences with life that is what an intelligent man does that is what the heart does the intelligent person depends on his own insight he trusts his own being he loves and respects himself the intelligence is of the heart a meditative man is a man of heart he is less of logic and more of love he is less of an intellectual and more of an intelligent being i met a man and he said i have stopped eating non-veg from last 10 years but still in my dreams i always see some tasty non-veg dishes as if they are inviting me but i say no i will not eat you now what a joke is this 10 years you are not eating non-veg but every minute of those 10 years you have been dreaming of many non-veg delicacies what good it has done to you what good are you doing to yourself you must have not even slept with peace for so many years this is how repression does expression is life repression is suicide i said to him right now you go to the best restaurant in your city and order all the non-veg dishes that you have been craving for all this 10 years the next morning he calls me and says thank you for the first time in my life i have felt so peaceful so blissful i have had the best sleep of my life thank you so much what is the point in repressing your desires instead understand the futility of those desires now this man wasted his 10 long years by repressing his desire of eating non-veg food if he had not repressed maybe by now his consciousness would have helped him realize the futility of eating too much non-veg food so some progress would have happened but now he is back to zero do not condemn anything instead understand the futility of it you cannot remain a virgin and go on condemning sex for that first you have to experience sex so much so that a day comes in your life when you realize that what a fool you had been monkeying around having so much of sex enough when you yourself say enough that is the point of your real transformation and not when you say stop or repress your desires this enough comes only through your experiences a man should not be afraid of any experiences experiences are the source that leads you towards maturity experience life in all possible ways good bad bitter sweet dark light summer winter experience all the dualities don't be afraid of experience because the more experience you have the more mature you become maturity has nothing to do with your age it is the quality of experience that matures you and not just the years of experience exalted rahu brings material gains exalted ketu brings spiritual growth let us all move away from rahu the ignorance that leads to many desires and let us all move towards sri ketu the source towards yourself the whole story of human life is between these two ends rahu and ketu ignorance and consciousness desires and desirelessness if the fake gold the gold that you consider to be real gold shines so much then imagine just imagine how much the gold within you will shine how much the light within you can shine but to realize the gold within you all that is rubbish all that is doing no good to yourself has to be thrown out so that you can come 
to the purest gold within you the irony is that people are behind the gold that can be bought on the outside whereas i am encouraging you all to focus on the gold that is within you the gold that is within you is going to be with you the gold that you have in your lockers can be stolen but the gold that is within you cannot be stolen nobody can take it away from you it is truly yours you are already a masterpiece you are already a light you just have to come to the point of realization and then there is a song to it a dance drop the idea of becoming someone because you are already a masterpiece you cannot be improved you have only to come to it to know it to realize it spend some time in meditation spend some quality time with yourself to each person who is listening to this answer i tell you you are a beautiful person focus on your heart follow your heart overcome the mind and reach towards the depth of your heart always remember one candle can light thousands of candles be that one candle meditate and help each other to be more and more meditative jai shri ganesha jai guru ओम गम गणपत नम ओम गम गणपत नम ओम गम गणपत नम